Ah, oh, hello everybody, it's Mega Livic here, otherwise known as Puglo Escobar, or this time of year, Santa Paws. And sorry, hell, bloody raccoon. And today we're going to be looking at the Overflood Zia. What's a Zeno? Something like that, retailing at a price of uh, $2,820,000, I do believe that was. And in terms of looks, I'm sure you'll agree, it's uh, cooler than skinny dipping in the Antarctic Ocean. Okay, well, let's get started, shall we? Two fully upgraded, uh, what's it, what they, they call Zeno, Zeno, something like that. Uh, either way, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the snow, but uh, we're going to base the, uh, the review on uh, dry conditions. Acceleration, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, it's less impressive than a peacock with alopecia, you understand my meaning, you know? In terms of top speed, ladies and gentlemen, it is good, you know, I mean, it's faster than the fall of the British Empire, you know, it's just that quick, you know? Uh, in terms of handling, ladies and gentlemen, well, I'm afraid it's more likely to lose grip than a Hollywood celebrity after winning an Oscar, you know? Okay, uh, that's about uh, all one could really say about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, in terms of acceleration, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, like I say, it's sort of sort of more disappointing than a Hollywood sequel 20 years after the original. Uh, in terms of top speed, I mean, it sort of moves faster than a Western government moves to restrict citizens' rights following the outbreak of a cough or cold. Uh, and in terms of handling, ladies and gentlemen, it's about as average as an elephant's attempt to paint a picture using a chimpanzee as a paintbrush. Okay, so we're going to send it on up to Sandy Shores, ladies and gentlemen, to see how uh, it was called the Zeno or the Zeno stacks up uh, uh, against some other vehicles. Not a very first vehicle we're going to bring out on this occasion, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be the Overflow Tyrant, don't you know? A rather expensive vehicle. It was uh, sort of, uh, at least in the price terms, ladies and gentlemen, the top end uh, uh, Overflow until uh, the release of the Zeno, retailing for about uh, two and a half million dollars, I do believe, ladies and gentlemen. It was underperforming uh, even when it was released, and it hasn't got any better uh, since, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, it's going to come in second, you know. And there we go, crossing the line. Okay, so uh, the next pick we're going to bring out, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the Dubachi Wagner, one million five hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. I do believe for this particular vehicle, so it's at uh, one and a half million dollars, being driven by Mr. Raccoon. Perhaps I should point out, as are all of the other vehicles in these videos, you know, uh, generally speaking, uh, Mr. Raccoon. His name is uh, is the Bromby. He has a channel of his own. Uh, just called the Bromby. Uh, should you type that into YouTube, you should go and find this channel while you guys got some rather good videos on there. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's rather a shock to see the uh, 1.5 million Dubachi sat rather close behind the Zeno there as we cross the line, so that's not looking good. Now we're going to go back over to the overflows, ladies and gentlemen. I think just seen that we thought, oh god, what about the Autorush? You know, the Autorush was not a bad car. Uh, like I say, uh, it was one point uh, two million five hundred uh, two million five hundred fifteen thousand dollars for the Tyrant, ladies and gentlemen, the Overflood Tyrant, and for the Overflood Auto Arch, it's at one million nine hundred fifty-five thousand dollars, and it's coming past us there. Yeah, so if you're thinking about uh, going and buying yourself uh, an Overflood, ladies and gentlemen, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, uh, we would uh, highly recommend the Auto Arch. It's going to beat the Zeno there or the Zeno, whatever it's called. It doesn't really matter now, does it? Okay, so we're going to continue with the test anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're not going to wrap things up straight away in the very first, or the very next car we're going to bring out, I should say, is the Garoli Furia, retailing at, uh, I think, really two million, or two million seven hundred and forty thousand dollars, depending on whether you do the Moody Man missions or not, you understand, ladies and gentlemen. It is a very fine car, it's worth two million dollars, it's certainly not worth two and three quarter million dollars, as you can see by how fast we pass it there. And now, it does have to be said that the, uh, the Zeno, ladies and gentlemen, the Zeno does have fantastic top speed, but that's about all it's got going for it. In fact, it can make it down the uh, top speed test track in about 50 seconds, which is Krieger territory. Just can't match it around the track. Okay, so the very next vehicle we're going to bring out, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be uh, one of the latest vehicles to be released from the game. It is the Pagassi Ignis, don't you know? A rather fine vehicle. Both Mr. Raccoon and myself were rather impressed with this vehicle, despite its rather lofty uh, price tag. You know, not entirely certain if it's worth the money, but it's a darn good car. And if you were thinking of buying uh, one of the more uh, recent supercars to be released, we would seriously recommend the Ignis over the Overflow there, over the Diaz uh, you know. Okay, so it's time to start wrapping things up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've tried, we've gone and brought our Big Daddy Z, as doubtlessly you can see, you know, $725,000. Only purchases you with the Pegasus Entorno. It's got fantastic acceleration, as you can see. Uh, sending this launching ahead of the Zeno or the Zeno there, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, unfortunately, there we go, it's getting around the corner in front of us. Unfortunately, we have got that top speed, so yeah, Big Daddy's he's not going to be able to stand up to it. Uh, but I'm sure you'll agree, ladies and gentlemen, for, uh, I mean, sort of less than $2 million or $2 million off the price, it came very close. So there's only one more question, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, that is the final masquerade. It is the Karate Atali RSX, what we have pulled on this channel to be the finest car on GDR Life for the time being. The uh, Prince Epic Devastate can be damned as far as we are concerned. Okay, and there's no question, ladies and gentlemen, the RSX is going to absolutely monster it. So what can Pons say, you know, in terms of acceleration, ladies and gentlemen, the Xeno is more underperforming than a drunk virgin in a whorehouse, you know. In terms of top speed, it's faster than a flaming cheater in freefall. Uh, and in terms of handling, ladies and gentlemen, it's more likely to kick out than a French football player in a frenzy. Uh, in terms of looks, though, one can't complain, you know. I mean, it is sort of sleeker than an oil... Uh, the sleeker than a uh, seagull in an oil slick, you know. And sort of more serious than the seismologist of the super volcano. Is it worth the money? No, it's certainly not. Stayed the sodding hell away from the thing, in our opinion. You know, got top end speed, but that's all it's got going for it. There's a lot better cars out there for sodding hell, blah. Bloody raccoon. Right, okay, yes, he's stunning good me again. He's getting rather sick of that time to pull out the old uh, shotgun. Here we go, Mr. Bloody hell. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.